You're watching the new Stack Makers, a podcast for people who develop, deploy, and manage at scale software. For more information and articles about at scale technologies, please visit thenewstack.io. Now enjoy the show. Since its inception, Amazon Web Services, AWS, has been the best place for customers to build and run open source software in the cloud. AWS is proud to support open source projects, foundations, and partners. Hi, everyone. I'm Jennifer Riggins. I am the tech culture correspondent at The New Stack. Today, we are here at Open Source Software Summit in stunning Bilbao. And we're here today to talk about power tools for AWS Lambda. I've got Andrea and Leandro. And if you two want to introduce yourselves, give your context in the open source space as we're in an open source place. For sure, thank you. Thank you for having us. My name is Andrea Morosi, and I'm a solution architect at AWS. I've been with the company for about three years now. Uh, I usually work with uh, AWS partners, so companies who help our customers to build on AWS. And I also maintain uh, the project Power Tools for AWS Lambda. I'm the lead maintainer for one of the different languages, and I started my open source journey a few years back. I'm a software developer, of, I have a background in software development, and I'm really excited to be here, joined by Leandro. Hi, my name is Leandro Damascena. I'm a specialist at SAIL, working with Power Tools, full maintainer of Power Tools, help customers to adopt the best practices in Lambda and environments and serverless workloads at AWS. I joined AWS like one year ago, and I'm working with open source. I spent my last 10 years working with open source, so I really like that because we can contribute with the project that you use, and you can give back to the project the knowledge and the thing that you think make better the project. So who is the target audience for Power Tools? Who do you typically work with and help? Yeah, so we have a a varied audience really. So obviously it started with developers. They are the first type of persona that we target and uh, engage with our projects. However, over time we saw that our community expanded. So we started branching out into people who are uh, security analysts and they use uh, scripting to secure their workloads or DevOps engineers and also data scientists really. So what's the common use case for this tool? So it started out around observability, so being able to ask arbitrary questions about your workloads. And then uh, we evolved into more uh, advanced use cases like item potency, making your workload safe to retry, or also batch processing, so processing large amounts of data in batches, or also streaming data. So we really try to uh, accompany our customers across their serverless journey, really. Oh, wow. Okay. And you have an announcement today, right? So what's the big thing happening? So, you heard it here first. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I just mentioned a second ago of item potency. So uh, we are launching a new feature in one of the runtime because just for your context, we our project is supports different programming languages. Which like, are, yeah. which ones? So the first one that came was Python, mm -hmm. then we have Node.js and TypeScript, then we have Java, and then we have .NET. So we have four languages. Python is the most mature and has the most uh, features in, uh, in Power Tools. However, TypeScript is catching up and we are prioritizing feature parity. And today uh, we are announcing a new feature, which is item potency. So just for, for the audience, item potency is a practice that allows you to make your workloads uh, safe to retry and make sure that they happen exactly once. So for instance, that's it. Imagine that you have a payment process or, or you're buying your tickets for the next concert. You want to make sure that your customers are charged only once yeah. or that they make their, their order only once. So making a workload or an action item potent means that even if this action happens multiple times, it's really processed only once. Okay. And this has a lot of nuances. It, takes, it involves a lot of moving pieces because obviously you need to maintain some sort of state and you need to make sure that everything is safe and, and so on. So item potency, the utility that we're launching today, really helps you to do that pretty easily. You can just add a few codes, a few lines to your code and everything will be taken care of for you by the and, utility. And this is a good point because everything that you do in Power Tools is very close to a well-protected framework from AWS. The, the, 
the book, the guidelines that guide the best adoptions of cloud computing. So related to the cost, to the res resilience, fault tolerance, any others. And you hear from customer. So the customer was was needed. Hey, why Power Tools can help you? How Power Tools can help us to achieve best practices, yeah. to develop a more resilient workload, or fault tolerance, or I don't know to prevent duplicated duplicated requests on that. So it's a great announcement in TypeScript. It's in TypeScript runtime. We have four runtimes: Python, TypeScript, Node, and uh, Python, TypeScript, Java, and .NET. And this is very specific for TypeScript, but we are looking for the other runtimes to launch the same features as we have in Python and TypeScript. Yeah, and to, to add to that, the idea of Power Tools, the philosophy behind it is that essentially we we heard from our customers that by the time that they build their ready their workloads and they do an assessment, it might be too late to apply those best practices because they need to go back and re-architect and yeah. rewrite some code, and this is uh, costly in both in terms of time and resources. So using something like Power Tools can help you achieve those best practices during the development phase already, so that you know that you're building your workload according to those best practices. That's interesting because I think it was two years ago now a Linux Foundation open source survey found that 3% of developers wanted to be responsible for security. And yet we have this overarching message that everyone's responsible for security. Yeah. So how much effort does it will it actually take for these TypeScript developers to implement this? Well, it really depends on the extent that they want to go during the development phase, but essentially they need to be aware of the project and then they need to start uh, in, in implementing those practices with Power Tools. The, the effort is m much less than the one that they will take if they, if they implement it in, on their own. And the point is that by using an open source project, instead of having to reinvent the wheel in each single customer, in each single team, they, can, they know that there is a community behind and there is a concerted effort to maintain those and to keep them up to date and to, and to continue to evolve them. And this, is, this helps them also. It's not just the, the initial investment and the effort that they need to make to build it, but also to maintain it. And this is something that we hear that our customers value a lot. They know and they can trust the fact that we steward this project and that we keep it going and keep evolving it. So let's talk about the community because sometimes there are large corporations and I think we could call Amazon a large corporation. Yeah, yeah, for call sure. me crazy. <laughs> and a lot of these big tech companies are maintaining projects but it's really internal to that company. So how does AWS foster a community in this project or in general in open source? Yeah, so with in, in this project specifically, we started and we do everything uh, in the open. So we have uh, at the moment we have a go uh, we own the governance of the project because we believe in creating a solid foundation. However, all our processes, all our uh, development effort, everything is in the open. So anyone can really go on our GitHub repo and understand uh, repos and understand uh, what we're doing, uh, how issues and how features are prioritized. They can contribute in different ways. Uh, the, it's, it's really important for us to be open and to be approachable because as I mentioned earlier, we don't know who uh, we are talking to necessarily all the time. And so it's important that they feel welcome and they feel, um, they feel that they can contribute really to this effort. And we are very close to community because Power Tools contribute with Power Tools in order about, not only about writing code. Because most of open source projects, and I was on that guy, that I went to repository, I pick up some issues, and I create a code, and it's okay, my contribution. But with Power Tools, we open the contribution in many areas. For example, you can contribute in authoring RFC. We need to create new utilities. So you can go there and say, hey, I, I am a customer, and I want to introduce a new feature, and you can design this feature to look like that, and you can create the code like that. You can go to the Power Tools and you can contribute with the documentation. Okay. Because yeah, we invest important. a lot of time with the documentation. This is a very, very, very specific thing in Power Tools that we spend time to create yeah. a good documentation. So you can go there, if you are not confident, how to contribute you contribute with Power Tools, you can schedule with us a one-on-one -on -one session. Yeah, wow. we have a Discord server. 
you can go there and you can say, hey, I want to yeah. contribute with Power Tools. I have these needs and I want to write code, but I don't know how to start to write that. So you can go there, we offer that. So I can say that Power Tools is not only write code. Yeah. You can contribute and you are open to the community. We hear from community and say, hey, come to us and contribute with Power Tools. Yeah, and, and this, is, this is very important because a lot of times, you know, Contributors have different uh, backgrounds, different levels of uh, skills and seniority. So uh, sometimes there are also language barriers. So maybe they feel like they they're not comfortable speaking and writing in English. And we pride ourselves to be an international team. So collectively, we, sp we speak between six and six, five and six languages. And so we, what was Leandro was saying, we offer one-on-one -on -one sessions where we can, you know, try to speak in their language and to in our shared language and to try to coach them. You know, not just in code, but also how to actually contribute to open source. And you know, this is we think that this is working quite well. Larry, right now, 40% of our feature have been contributed by the community, so by non-AWS employees. And this is something that we're really proud of. You should be. This is not typical or normal in the open source space, I would say, uh, especially the focusing on non-technical contributions as well as technical, yeah. and still the contributors, while they are doing voluntary work, but they're also getting then on their CV work with AWS, which is yes. essential as well. And you're giving all forms of contributors, not yeah. just the highest level of technical contribution access to your network and Correct. time with you all. So that and, is a very and, valid reason. And also having many types of personas, not only developers, not only data engineers, we don't make assumptions when someone open a issue or send a code. We try to understand the reason that customer went to the repository and proposed a PR or proposed a pull request or, I don't know, a feature request. And you try to help the customer to achieve what they want. So, hey, you want to implement this new issue, this new feature, you want to implement this new utility, I don't know. So you try to help the customer to develop the, the good experience, to learn by contributing, So because it's very important. Yeah. Because the, we, we experience something like very interesting Power Tools, because the customers starting learning about Power Tools in conference, events, I don't know, meetups. Podcasts. I don't know, yeah, like yeah. that. <laughs> and after that, the customer try Power Tools, make a POC or internal enablement, I don't know. And after that, when the customer adopts the Power Tools, the customer come to report and say, hey, I want to contribute with Power Tools. Yeah. I want this feature, I want the utility. And you have cases that customers start using Power Tools and become an AWS hero. Mm -hmm. Because the Power Tools is the contribution with Power Tools. And we have a lot of mountain, a lot of contribution like that. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you yourself, you started contributing yeah. before I started being contributing, an and after I joined the AWS, I started as a user. Yeah. And after that, I start spread the spread the Power Tools world. I came from Brazil, and in Brazil we use a lot of uh, many companies using Power Tools. So I started implementing Power Tools as a consultant in the company. And after that, I joined the AWS, and now I'm maintaining a Power Tools. So. Well, high five. That's yeah. very important. That's what... Yes. It's the power of the, the open source. the spirit of open <laughs> yes. source. Yeah, yeah. That is what's supposed to happen. It doesn't often happen. So that's yeah, really yeah, wonderful yeah. to hear. In general, how is this part of the trend? We've touched on the open source side, but now about security. What is open source security is a polemic topic, yeah. I think yeah. we could say. So how does that... Yeah, work? so in Power Tools, we are trying to get an holistic view of this. So there is uh, something called OpenSSF Scorecard, which is essentially a framework uh, for open projects that looks at, your, at the health of your project in an holistic way. So it doesn't look just strictly at your code or at your uh, dependency, but also looks at the way that the project is maintained. So for instance, is it approachable for new contributors? Or are there established and documented way to contribute, for instance? So this uh, this is something that we recommend to uh, other open source uh, projects and customers in general, is to look into this framework, because that, is, that will naturally and gradually guide you to apply uh, also security practices. For instance, it can help you to assess your supply chain 
dependencies. It can help you to create uh, provenance or uh, sign your artifacts. So this is all things that play into the security. And this is something a lot that you've worked on. Yeah, this is important. The, oh, the scorecard is a, uh, a good example because it's not looking into the code. It's not looking into our repository. It's giving the customer the confidence about the project. Oh. So when the scorecard generates the report, it's the grade from 0 to 10. We have a grade 9.3, 9.7, I don't remember. 9.3. <laughs> so it's to give the customer the confidence about the project. So hey, we have a framework that implements best practice not only the code, but about the governance, about signing builders, for example. And the customer can, can yeah. see that and say, hey, this is a zero project. This is a project that takes security as a zero as a zero issue, yes. as a zero priority. So it, it's it's good to implement yeah. scorecard because it's not only internal, it's public. We are open source. Correct. We need to provide data to the customer as an open source project. So yes. we say to the customer. Exactly. Because it's one thing is say we are secure, another thing is to have a public and auditable ledger that says so so everything, every every release and every operation that we do is assessed is uh, verifiable and auditable by customer. And this is something that people have told us that they really value. So because they're able to make this part of their, you know, by improving our own security, we also indirectly uh, help address those concerns on the customer side because That's obviously true. we are a dependency for them. Yeah, absolutely. And I think especially for corporations, while they may have down their stack open source code they're not even aware of, that may have a single maintainer, more and more they need to be aware of the security of the project. So I hope this spreads very well. I assume you're going to be talking to all the booths to try to convince them as well. Yes, definitely. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> well, thank you both so much. Obrigado. Grazie mille. Oh, thank you. Thank <laughs> and you thank you all. I hope you enjoy the rest of your Open Source Summit, Bill Bow. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're on all the major social media platforms. You can always find us at thenewstack.io. We hope to see you soon.